you know, unique situation, tough day, but, you know, really resilient group, proud of the way we responded, but I'm not surprised, you know, working with these guys. Um, we got down a few times, but they keep fighting, they keep coming, they keep competing. And so just very proud, you know, of the way we competed tonight. Um, we had some, some lows, but, you know, like I said, we kept fighting and, uh, you know, kept coming, you know, to the end. Yeah, you talk about keep coming to the end. That, that fourth quarter really extended it. It just seemed like it started with the free throw line. Just what did you see from in, in that fourth quarter there? Our guys were aggressive, um, you know, attacking, you know, embracing the physicality on the drives. Uh, we got into the bonus. Um, so Shea did a good job. Our guys did a good job of getting into their bodies, um, you know, and taking advantage of that drawing foul so we can stop the clock and, you know, score hopefully while the clock is not moving, you know, and allow us to claw back into the game a little bit and extend the game, you know, and give ourselves a chance to, you know, you know, throw a punch, you know, to the last second. Nick Gallo, KCThunder.com. On that point, Shea came into the game ninth in free throw attempts in the entire NBA. I imagine he's going to jump a few spots after tonight. But even from the very beginning of the time that he was in OKC, he talked about just the importance of getting to the free throw line for him as a scorer. Where have you seen him grow in that department and sort of the intentionality behind that? I think um, just playing with, with more pace, um, looking to get downhill, um, taking advantage of, you know, after free throw situations, like getting the ball out quickly um, to him and allowing him to attack before the defense can really get settled. Um, playing in pick and roll situations where the defense is maybe switching and their 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 coverage is not as tight um, as, as opposed to allowing them to get set and multiple guys can focus in on them. So just playing quicker, getting downhill. And, uh, you know, he brags to me all the time about, you know, getting stronger. Um, so I think, you know, he's growing in that area and has allowed him to be able to take some physicality, some bumps, you know, and still, you know, push through and get all the way to the rim. And you had Olivier Saar in that kind of Derek Favors second unit minutes. Mm -hmm. um, what did you like from what you saw from him? Obviously, he seemed to be able to be disruptive on defense and then, you know, just make the simple play down low for you on offense. Yeah, I really want to tip my hat, hat off to um, Coach Grant Gibbs, uh, you know, preparing, you know, our, our guys and uh, – making them ready for this situation. It was it was a pretty, you know, smooth transition for the most part. Um, but he provided great activity, great energy, um, provided some rim protection. Um, it was just active. Um, and so he, he, he gave us definitely a really good boost um, tonight and uh, gave us some really quality minutes. Joe on the front. Joe Masato, the Oklahoman. Mike, uh, Aaron Wiggins seemed to give you guys a boost there in the third quarter, had a steal and a run out dunk, a, a nice putback dunk. What has impressed you the most about him as a rookie? Man, just his, his poise, um, the way he competes, um, the way he impacts the game, you know, defensively. Um, he's just solid, you know, on both sides of the ball. Um, he plays within a team concept, but still finds ways to, to stand out individually with his play. You, you mentioned it defensively, his activity. Um, he provides multiple efforts on the defensive end of the floor. Um, he's active in passing lanes. He's helping his teammates. Um, he's chasing over screens, um, working to stay you know, in front of the ball, get back in front of the ball, pick and roll situations. So, um, you know, just his overall, I guess, motor, I would say, has been impressive, um, and then offensively, um, just being ready to, you know, make simple plays, take open shots, attack closeouts, make cuts off the ball, and then just play within within our team concept. And then from a personal standpoint, what was it like just the experience of being the head coach tonight? And was there anything that stood out or maybe surprised you uh, handling that job tonight? I uh, still feel it doesn't feel real, to be honest. Like. Um, it's, it's kind of surreal to me um, as a as a former player. I spent a lot of time in, in Sacramento in the off season, like training. So I got a lot of family and friends here um, that were here to support. And just it just felt like certain things just kind of came full circle, you know, how how it worked out. There's some silver linings in in a, in a difficult situation, and so um, you know. I, I'm still like 
feel like I'm dreaming, kind of. Um, but it was fun. You know, I had a lot of fun. You know, I was a lot more relaxed than uh, I thought I would be. Um, and that was credit to, you know, our staff. Um, they were very supportive. Um, they they carried a lot of weight and, and helped, helped, think, helped me a lot in the different situations um, that were new to me. And so, and, and then our players, you know, they continue to come out and compete. Um, and, you know, give us a chance to, to you know, win, win games. So um, just proud of our guys, proud of the way we competed tonight. And, uh, you know, we're going to take this situation like we do, you know, anything, try to learn from it and grow from it. Thanks, Mike.